All right, and welcome to this uh, special edition here. Kerry Von Eric through the eyes of Wacko Bob, and I'm glad to be doing this show here. Um, you know, I just, you know, it really, for me, for me, um, just, you know, I've seen a lot of people talk about things with uh, Kerry Von Eric, you know, and I don't disagree with them. I think they all do great jobs where they talk about the Von Erickson world class. I've done a few of them myself along with uh, beautiful Ben, known by others as, uh, uh, you know, uh, MVE fan forever, Mike Von Eric fan forever, you know. And, uh, you know, we've, we've done a lot. You know, Rick Ryder as well, too, when I had the dark match. Um, but, um, well, here's what a lot of people don't know, you know, is the fact that, you know, yes, I have watched World Class Championship Wrestling for years, you know, and I gotta say, you know, I love, you know, I love the Von Eriks, but I think Carrie, by a lot, I, the people who do the stuff on the Von Eriks do good jobs. Even the wrestlers that talk about the Von Erichs, they all do good jobs. I just don't think Carrie really gets his just due. I really don't think he gets his just due. For a couple of reasons, and there are a couple of reasons for that. You know, I mean, you know, a lot of people, you know, have had there was a lot of hype behind David Von Erich becoming the world champion. But, you know, I mean, you know, and as much as I like David, you know, I have to say that for myself, speaking mainly for myself, I think David would have been a world champ. I don't a lot of people said he would have held the title till Starcade. I don't think so. I think he would have been about a two to three month champion. It would have just gotten him more with uh, Jim Crockett Promotions, which was really already taken over even back then with the NWA. And I just truthfully think that was really what it was happening. It really, you know, it was a to- totally different time. And I just really want to go over Kerry because yes. We'll talk about the other Von Eriks and whatnot. We will get get into all that. But I just think Carrie, really, when when you talk about the Von Eriks, people talk about uh, David Von Erich really being the uh, you know the uh, the most popular and the greatest of the Von Eriks. And I think that's kind of unfair to say, you know, because a lot of people put Carrie really into the background a lot more, and I. Again, I disagree with this. I will say this, that I think Kerry would have had more respect if certain things did not did not happen or go on. And, you know, the big thing about the Von Eriks, for me, is, it, it, you, know, you know, is the fact that, is the fact that they ruled wrestling. They really did. They didn't look like they just simply ruled in Dallas, especially when their show went all over the country and all over the world and even got a spot on ESPN. They looked like they ruled the world. I mean, yeah, it really did. Fritz von Erich really had something going, but I think Fritz really wanted to put everything more around Carrie than anything else. Now, if he could have done that without Carrie being the favorite son and coddled so much, I think it would have meant more because I think Carrie would have had a better passion on the mic, and would have, we would have had a better passion for wrestling. And truth let it be known, I think when you look at Carrie's career, you know, David and Mike, David and, and excuse me, Kevin, were already wrestling. Carrie then joined them. And Carrie was really already doing in four years' time as opposed to Kevin and David's six years. He was already doing and getting up to a standard that they were already going up to and was probably a step higher for a while there. I think when you get into 83 and 84, David really took over it. You know, because Kerry it was step by step by step. David Von Erich had springboard into this springboard. 
you know, and ju- and you know, and just do that where Carrie was step by step. If Carrie was not the favorite and didn't have the drug problems he had, I just think Carrie would have been much more behind the Von Erichs, and really still is, in my opinion. You know, he was the one. He had the body. He had the body. He had the charisma. And believe me, when you look at him in the ring, his charisma was was there. You know, I mean, people compare uh, charisma to ring psychology. David had the ring psychology. David, even though Kevin started a few months before David, it was David who would, you know, spend full-time wrestling. Those first few years. So he would learn the whole wrestling psychology, the whole ring psychology. He would learn David could be, was probably the only Von Erich who could really be a heel. Here in Florida, David Von Erich would show up, he would be the heel. When Carrie first did some shows here, he actually tried uh, doing a heel and was not good at it. Was not good at it at all. In fact, I don't think Kerry really became that good on the mic until, and it was a short time for him, until after his motorcycle accident and he won the, the world class title. You got to see a little more come out of him for a short time there in 87 and 88. By the time he got to the end of 88, his mic skills kind of diminished again. I think it was the drugs doing it. I think, you know, and, you know, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that he was codependent on him after his motorcycle accident. But to look back at it, you know, you wish these things didn't happen. The motorcycle action, accident, the drug addiction, the fact that he was Fritz's favorite. If he could have done all that without all that, Kerry would have probably been the biggest thing of the 80s, second only to Hulk Hogan, in my opinion. And here's why. I mean, he was winning titles in, in his father's promotion, but he would also go to uh, places like uh, Missouri and be in uh, St. Louis. St. Louis for, uh, I believe it was Sam Muchnick who had that. And, of course, Bob Geigel, who had the other par- part of Missouri, Kansas Kansas City and Central States wrestling. So he he would he and David would hold hold, hold the Missouri title there at different times. But for Kerry, he mostly did it with his father. I mean, we would see Kerry work other promotions. I saw him wrestle in uh, Angeles of Oldies ICW. There was stuff of him in the WWF where he was just simply making an appearance. And did something there, yeah. You know, of course, we always saw him here. We we always saw him here, not just when he was the world champion and before he was, but even after. Kerry did some stints here in Florida. In fact, just to sell tickets after the whole dust, Dusty Rhodes, uh, uh, you know, pretty much uh, emptying the cupboard on uh, Eddie Graham, they would do Ric Flair, Kerry Von Erich matches down here just to draw the the crowd. So to say Kerry was not anything is really bad, in my opinion. Kerry will not be a two-time WWE Hall of Famer and get in there as a Texas Tornado. He's in there with the Von Erich family as a modern-day warrior. And I do think he was tainted. I do think Kerry was tainted in this regard. And uh, for me... I just think Kerry, you know, I think a lot was expected of him. And now, as we look at his career, as it's building up into 1982, Kerry Von Erich is the one I think Fritz really desired to see <clears throat> be the world champion. I think... Um, 
I think I think he really wanted that end of it more for Carrie than he did David. I think David had the dream. I think David again. Let me just uh, reiterate this. I think David had the dream. I don't think. I think Carrie wanted it, and I think Carrie would and Carrie would have loved being the champion. But I think, I think after David's passing. Carrie sort of got it because David Von Erich wasn't there and the emotion would be great. But if you look at Carrie, he's not showing as much emotion as people would want to think as the as the world champion. I don't because I don't think it was celebrated all throughout the in the National Wrestling Alliance as it should have been when he won that title. And I think that's really step number 1 against Carey, plus his drug problems, you know, did things. You know, he missed dates. He had his drug problems. And after, he, especially after he won the title for those short 18 days, Ric Flair had to carry him through their non-title rematch. And, and even in Japan, Carey in 18 days had 16 title defenses 16 dates with the title and he and he did them all all the way up to losing the title to Ric Flair in Japan which I honestly don't think would have happened I don't think would have happened I think Kerry would have probably gotten out of Japan as the champion as a champion and uh, gotten back in either would have gone to another country or gone or Puerto Rico and gotten gotten himself back into the states to where he probably would have lost the title there because again a lot of people said David would have been champion longer than 18 days and probably true some people said he would have held the title up till Starcade I think it would have just been 2 3 months and that would have been it. <clears throat> because David, even though he seemed like more of the heart and soul of the Von Erics, with his desire to really, really show his father he could do it, and to really stick it to his father while he does it. Another whole Jake the Snake Roberts thing there with Grizzly Smith in my opinion it wasn't Carrie's time it wasn't Carrie's time and if Carrie like I said if he didn't have the drug problem and he didn't miss dates he probably would have gotten away with being the champion for maybe maybe a month he maybe would have finished May and probably lost the title in early June If they would have probably had Kerry stay in Texas with the title for the first couple of weeks, maybe it would have meant more to world class. I heard that they were planning on something with Kerry going into the Parade of Champions if David Von Erich were still alive and David Von Erich won the title. They were looking to, they would, Chris Fritz would have looked to double main event it and had something there for Kerry because. I think Fritz wasn't the greatest promoter, but I think he knew the direction the business was going in. And this is a big thing compared to Kevin and David, and even Mike, is that the direction the business was going in was more tailor-made for Carrie than it was for either, either one of them. When it came down to wrestling, Carrie had the look and the body and he was probably more of the style and finesse which kind of and he was kind of obsessed with it but which kind of made him a little more of a sloppy wrestler compared to the other two David Von Erich knew ring psychology and a lot of people don't understand it when I said if you look at the best wrestler as far as pure athletics go 
it would be it would be uh, Mike Von Eric over over all of them. If you go by wrestling by wrestling purity of its ring psychology and whatnot, David wins. Carrie, if he could have had the mic skills better, you know, and had more of the ring psychology mixed in with his own style, along with his look, no drug problems, he wasn't dad's, daddy's favorite. I think Carrie would would have been the champion a year after or maybe even two years after after uh, the, 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 the the May 6, 1984 run that he actually did have and that, that, that would go to David. I think he would have because there was a plan to have have him uh, go against the Freebirds instead of being there with Fritz, but there was also a plan for Carrie to do another program. There was also the rumor of that one, too. And uh, so, so, so there were some pieces to this puzzle. And that have to be really looked at. Carrie's career was tainted. And it was more. It was tainted more because of Carrie than anything else. Don't blame Vince McMahon for uh, for for this. You know where he, where Carrie Von Eric may have just peaked and that was it. Not the case. Carrie's drug problem and unreliabilities are what did this to him, which is why he didn't get in with the NWA and Jim Crockett promotions, which is why. In the end, WWE had to reduce him. And why he was gone for so long and Fritz needed someone to uh, carry the promotion and really didn't have it. And why do I say 1986 like I do? Some people want to ask me that where carry goes. If you look at World Class before that first half of 1986, before his motorcycle accident that cost him his foot, you, you really see the company really being b- built around Carrie. They were slowly starting to build it around Carrie. In fact, I'll go as far as saying this. I think Rick Rude was probably, you know, their world champion a lot longer than he should have been. You know, I think he, I, I shouldn't say a lot longer than he should have been. He held the, the title longer than he really would have would be the better way to say that with Rick Rude because I think the goal was for Rick Rude to face Carrie and lose the title. Instead, it happened more with uh, Chris Adams. So, I mean, you know, I think you would have seen, I think you would have seen something happen there. And it's not just, and that that's just, strike one we're getting into here when you look at that title reign in 84 it goes memorable magazines and everyone were show was showing this like it shouldn't be forgotten but that's how much Carrie meant he didn't mean that to just Texas and Dallas and Fort Worth he meant uh, he meant something when he won that all over the world the world loved the von Ericks. Texas, they were gods. I'll admit to that. Dallas, Texas, they were gods. But uh, for Kerry, uh, you know that that world title reign should not have happened. It should have been David's. I think that. I also think that works against Kerry as well too, because it was before his time. And let's say he did win the title and the. They never break away from the NWA in 1986 because everything went good with David. I think Kerry would have been the champ. And it would have been a reward for most wrestling fans. It would have been a reward for most wrestling fans. And why? We'll talk about that later on. Uh, As uh, a matter of fact, we'll talk about that after, after the break. 
Let's uh, take our commercial timeout, and we'll be right back. Canadian Aquatic Auctions is your place for that aquatic enthusiast and your family this holiday season. With Christmas fast approaching, now is the time to look for that great gift for that special someone who lives the aquatic lifestyle. With years of experience, owner-operator Nelson Fletcher can help you achieve your aquatic needs and goals and help you find that special gift for that aquatic enthusiast you love. You can also converse with other aquatic hobbyists and enthusiasts by logging on to www.aquariumauctions.ca and joining the TAC room where you can ask any questions. Visit Canadian Aquatic Auctions today at their website at www.aquariumauctions.ca or their Facebook page at facebook.com slash Canadian Aquatic Sales. Together we can build lasting relationships based on listening and servicing your needs in a professional environment. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Canadian Aquatic Auctions. My name's James. For six years, I was a garbage can druggie. I would do any kind of drug I would get my hands on. But here at Teen Challenge, I've walked away from that drug lifestyle for good. If you know an adult or teenager who is struggling with a chemical addiction, Teen Challenge is there to help. Please, don't wait. Call us today at 417-862-6969 or reach us on the web at teenchallengeusa.com. Christmas is not far away. Come catch Santa on his sleigh. Time is precious. Seize the day at Ski's Watch and Clock. Ski's been in business for 20 years. He knows his stuff, so have no fears. He knows about all those tiny gears inside every clock. When you come to Ski's Watch and Clock, his variety is huge. From wrist watches, pocket watches, stop watches, desk clocks, mantle clocks, grandfather clocks, new and previously owned reconditioned pieces. Right now, with Christmas so close, we will only accept light repairs till after Christmas. The elves are busy enough as it is filling Santa's sleigh. Don't let the Grinch stop you from filling the stockings or putting things under the tree this year. If you're worried about getting someone a gift, you can put items on layaway with just a small deposit. Thanks to Ski, you can send that stupid Grinch to his bedroom with no dinner or TV and no computer or PlayStation. By now, you must be wondering where Ski's watch and clock is. It's located in beautiful downtown Winter Haven at 106 West Central Avenue, Florida, just across from the main post office. Call 863-294-5630. Again, that number is 863 863- Two nine four five six three zero. This is our time. We play without limits. We create without rules. We are not for sale. We connect with the whole world. Every idea we've shaped. Every relationship we've cultivated. Belongs to us. We demand the freedom to be our uncensored selves. And when something challenges that, we change it. Together. This is our time. One, two, three. Let's start a revolution. Let's MeWe. Join the revolution at MeWe.com. Memories can last a lifetime, especially when it comes to the holidays, especially when it involves taking pictures. If you live in Southern Oregon or Northern California, there's one place you can count on to make those memories last longer than the holidays. That place is Grateful Heart Photography. 
Abigail Summers can help you with making your Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, or whatever holiday you celebrate the best ever by taking single shots, family portraits, couple portraits, pet photos, and more. She can also capture the finest winter scenery you can imagine. Those photos are available all across the country and around the world at a price that will not empty your wallet for last-minute Christmas shopping. Don't wait until the last minute to get your pictures done for the holidays. Call Abigail Summers at Grateful Heart Photography at 541-951-2443 or message her at her Facebook page by searching Grateful Heart Photography. Much of her work can be found there. Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year from all your friends at Grateful Heart Photography. If you're looking for action-packed classic fun, look no further. Oh, there. It's a machine gun. Look out, Daddy! Up in the sky. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Hey, Superman. For the best in old time radio adventures, you've come to the right place. This is one nostalgic weekend. Saturdays and Sundays, midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on Action VR Network. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Are you looking for a great education that's also in a great location? Check out College of the Siskiyous. We offer a variety of career and technical education programs, general education, and personal enrichment classes. With our new Reg 365 process, you can register for any semester, any time of the year. With on-campus housing, an active campus life, competitive athletics, and expert guidance from our highly trained staff, College of the Siskiyous is waiting for you. Call us today. that really want to know that's actually Kerry Von Erich's music from his time in the AWA and um, and uh, I got to be honest with you I mean the one thing I have to admit man Kerry Von Erich you know I you know he came out to White Snake he came out to ZZ Top he came out to Rush then of course he had his music in uh, he did have his music that he did have in um, you know, in the WWE is the Texas Tornado. And we're going to get into that Texas Tornado time. And uh, why I feel the way I do about that one. And uh, we, uh, we'll get into that in a little while. I really want to stick with things here uh, with them in Texas. When he was the... Uh, well, when he, when he was the champ... When he when he when he was the uh, the uh, not not the NWA champion at this point, we really covered that. I think I don't think it was really as satisfying to carry with the NWA title when as it was. And here and to go back into 1986, if the you know the NWA would have still done things with them, and I think if Fritz would have agreed to something, I think by 1986, Kerry Von Erich world title run would have happened would have happened in a crowd just as big at Texas Stadium as 1984 and I think it would have you know because David would have had his time world class would have exploded Kerry would have still been the fastest rising star with David as a champ and if you look at it 1986 they were building around Kerry. 
They were. I think Kerry was originally meant to defeat Rick Rude for their version of the world title, which is what they changed the American title to. And he would have been the one defeating Rick Rude, and he would have defeated Rick Rude a lot sooner than it happened with Chris Adams. Um, the big thing I have to say about Rick Rude was he was defeating everybody. And I think that's why they just simply made him the world cha- world champion. He was defeating everybody as the American champion, including Kerry, in matches that were seen on TV. So I think they really just thought they could have some instant success with, with, with Rick Rude. But Kerry, again, they were building the company around him. And you were going to see that big match between Kerry and Rick Rude. But if that could have been the NWA instead against Ric Flair under the NWA banner and Kerry won the title, it would have made sense. He was really two years, two years premature. He won the title two years prematurely, in my opinion. He would have been ready by 1986. And it would have been a reward for all to have him as a champ because people would have enjoyed his reign. He would have gotten in with the Crockett's and probably would have been wrestling more with them and maybe only going back to Texas part time. But it really would have, and would have gone to Florida too. And it really would have helped us there because, truth, if you look at Kerry, he was starting to pump up his body more. Even after his foot injury, he was pumping up his body. If he could, you know, and, he, and he, if he would have had that done by 1987, especially after being the world champ, he, he may have still been the world champ by then because he would have been more ready for it and it would have been his his time and not living off of the David Von Erich time. The reward would have been to have a, have a champion with a business that was tailor-made for him. He had the body, he had the look. Like I said, if he didn't have the drug problem, he would have probably been much better on the mic. Would have had the same charisma. And most of all, we would have been rewarded, and I've said this plenty of times, and Rick Ryder has said it plenty of times, we probably would not have had Lex Luger force-fed down our throats. You know, And I'm not disrespecting Lex Luger, and, and I think Lex Luger, in the end, used what little bit he had to his advantage. And just like Ric Flair said, Luger didn't get time to perfect his craft, and that's not his fault. But you know, you know, we would have, we would have, no, we would not have seen as much of Lex Luger. You still would have seen him. His career would have probably been more at the at the Billy Jack Haynes level. But because you had Carey, who could do it better, and if you look at Carey, by the time he returned, hiding his uh, foot injury. The fact that he lost his foot, you would have probably seen a much better you would have seen you would have seen a much more pumped up Carrie Von Eric. You would have seen it. He would have been the one to get into. Luger wouldn't have been able to match that. Luger was probably more pumped up, more cut. You know, during during his first year in the business, if you looked at Lex Luger, he looked like he should have been a bodybuilder. With the way he looked, he was about 280, 200, to between 280 and 285 in muscle. And... Even after, if you look at Lex Luger, when uh, he went to the, you know, his end time in WCW before going to WWE to, to be more with the w, the World Bodybuilding Federation, Luger had pumped him, his body up even more to be that of the bodybuilders. But enough about Luger. <laughs> I like Luger. I just think Kerry would have probably... Not would have probably not made it happen so much with Lex Luger. I you know he for all we know he might have been the fourth member of the Horsemen after Ole Anderson, because that's the type of success he could have. So again, winning the title prematurely tainted Carey. 
his motorcycle accident tainted him. Because he was trying to get away from cops. I believe the story that he was. Because all of his trouble with the law really proves that. Yeah, so... I look at it, and I gotta say that. The made-up world title for world class, a lot of people didn't recognize it for its world title status. That's on Fritz because he insisted on staying in Dallas and Fort Worth. That didn't help him. They tried one big U.S. tour that he ultimately ended in the middle, and it was probably smart on Fritz's part due to the heavy drug problems, not just with his own kids, but their period and he wasn't really controlling it so I mean you know the best way for him to control it was to try to keep it at home but you look at him now now at this point while he's out Kevin Von Erich holds that world title for world class and even Kevin I didn't think Kevin was I don't think he ever had ambitions of holding a world title. I don't think he really wanted to hold that one. I think he was there because he was the next best one. Even though Mike Von Erich was getting ready to turn, uh, return, Mike Von Erich was really starting to come into his own before his issues happened. His, uh, his health issues happened. <clears throat> and truth let it be known, Mike wouldn't have been a world champion. No, he wouldn't have. So, you got to look at that part of it, too. So, Kevin was like the next best one. I think they probably should have kept the title more around Chris Adams' waist. I know that Chris Adams had trouble with the law and pretty much uh, was going to wind up going to jail. They wanted to get the title off of Chris Adams. So, they put the... uh, so. Chris Adams, of course, had already signed with uh, Ken Mantell and, and Bill Watts in the UWF. He was one of the many to leave with Ken Mantell to go over there. So they created this whole they created this whole phantom phantom switch, saying he lost the title in a in a town that world class has never been to in California. Put around Black Bart's waist just to transition the title to Kevin. They would have been better off probably just letting Chris Adams be the champ. And even if they had to try to manage something to keep Rick Rude. Maybe put the belt back around his waist. Neither one of them were up to the par of Ric Flair. The only one that could really do it and probably try to get to the par of Ric Flair would have been Kerry. Kerry had had his accident, but when you look at Kerry when he returned and Kevin had lost the title, and they used uh, you know the, the uh, near death scare of Kevin to to lose that title, you know I think that uh, truth truth let it be known, I think that. I think I think that you know the two title reigns Kerry had with that title. He definitely sounded better on the mic, you know. But you know, you look at the short title reign, then the long title reign before going to the uh, AWA to have the merger of titles. Kerry, I I don't I don't know if it meant as much to him to hold that title you blew it when you had the steel cage match and you had the return of the Freebirds with Iceman King Parsons instead of Michael Hayes you wanted to start that one off now the Freebirds cost him the world championship again wrong time to do that you probably would have been better off trying to make carry your champion right there when it was done it was done in a way that shouldn't have happened Iceman losing the title right away to Iceman didn't help. I think I know that the story is is that Al Perez was leaving, and 
most of your superstars were babyface with the exception to Terry Gordy for the most part. And you can say Buddy Roberts if you want to. So to put the belt around Iceman, who was just as popular as the Von Erichs, there was only three wrestlers in Dallas that were just as popular as the Von Erichs as babyfaces. Bruiser Brody, Chris Adams, and Iceman King Parsons. Iceman King Parsons was living off his heel roll from the UWF when they had the controversy happen for Iceman to win the title like he did. It was, like I said, they needed they needed another big, big shot heel. I think they wanted to just simply do that with Iceman. Brian Adias, you turned him heel, he became a little more successful, but wasn't going to be enough. He wasn't going to be what Chris Adams and Gino Hernandez were as the draw or the Freebirds. You know, he had some success, but not enough to justify. So, you did that with Iceman. Then, of course, you had Kerry regain the title. And it was done in such a fashion that there was no real hype. Kerry just simply won the title. I think Kerry went and pushed it as best as he could because it was with the family. But again, it became a too little too late. And Kerry, therefore, in my eyes, again, because of what happened a few years earlier winning the NWA title and whatnot, I just don't think Kerry was living the dream or making it like he was living the dream. And I'm talking real life here. So, again, that's another point of uh, interest. Kerry's other tainting came because of his drug problems. When it came time to merge the uh, AWA and uh, WCCW, or UW, the World Class Wrestling Association titles, to make for one unified champion, they did it in a way so he wouldn't lose face. But I remember talking to Manny Fernandez about this when we interviewed him. And I just think, I think Kerry would have would have been more, the more logical choice over Jerry Lawler because Lawler was gone, but also because of pay-per-view buy rates being low, Fritz just took the money and, and ran. He used the money to get other wrestlers in there to bring his brother, his uh, son-in-law Larry Zabisco back. And eventually get people like Morocco and Batera there. But it wasn't going to be enough to keep things going for them. But for Kerry, he went back to Texas not being the champ. Lawler would show up there. He would hold the Texas title. Only to do a big merger with that one for him to lose to Lawler again. So Kerry was sort of, was, was very much down. And, and wrong time for him. Wrong time to do that to him. Because when you're slowly but surely taking over Texas and you're Jerry Jared and you're not letting the Von Erichs do as much, that could also lead to a major disappointment for the Von Erichs and especially for Kerry. Drinking and drug, drugs. Kerry would bounce back though as being the Texas Tornado. And before, before I really get into that one, I love the gimmick of the modern day warrior. And I think WWE should have ran with that. I know they really just wanted to keep one warrior, which was why the road warriors had to take the next best name and become the Legion of doom. So, I mean, you know, so, but calling him the Texas tornado had its disadvantages, but set up for some things that would happen too. his discus punch would become be reinvented into the tornado punch. And would be done a little bit different, but reality is the same move. And, you know, when Kerry first showed up there, it was like we're looking at the modern-day warrior more so than the Texas Tornado. And that got him over a big hump. But really, looking at him as a Texas Tornado, I don't think fans really embraced it as much. Did it have its success? Yeah. When he won the Intercontinental title... I think it meant something to him. But, again, what was happening? 
Kerry was abusing alcohol. He was abusing painkillers. He was abusing drugs. In fact, they show a match with him where he actually faced Kurt Hennig on one of the Coliseum videos. And he takes off the belt and he's holding the belt and the referee's trying to get it from him. He was refusing to give it up. That was something that worked against him. And he instantly had a nosebleed upon a wrestling lockup. Which, of course, sign of drugs. And I do think at that point was where Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect, Mr. Perfect, got to regain the title and they put him into another program with Ted DiBiase that really didn't go anywhere. And you saw his slow road down. And truth let it be known, Kerry Von Erich winning the Intercontinental title, he didn't hold the title that long either. I think he held it for like 84 days, I think is what's on record with him as the Intercontinental Champion. So you're, you're either way, you're looking at him being you know, a few days to a week shy of nine, uh, you know, of three months as the champion. But they took the title off of him, and I think they had to do that right away because of the issues he was having. And truth is, again, and here's where, again, Kerry Von Erich's tainted because of that, and he right away got a shot at the Intercontinental title and defeated Mr. Perfect. I also, I think that was Perfect's title reign. I think he should have had that title reign go straight through to WrestleMania 7, and instead of Kerry Von Erich wrestling and beating Dino Bravo, he would have wrestled and beat Kurt Hennig for the Intercontinental title. That's what I personally believe. So, that's how I look at it through my eyes there. I think, he, I think he could have been the Intercontinental Champion and probably held the title for seven, maybe eight months. Maybe lose the title right after the 1991 Survivor Series. Or the 92 Survivor Series, excuse me. If, yeah, like I said, WrestleMania 7 till the Survivor Series that year would have guaranteed him seven and a half to eight months as champ. And I think because he couldn't get over that title again. Vince McMahon, if you're, you're going to have your personal demons and it's not helping your program out, then you shouldn't do it. So Kerry was was basically slowly but surely moving down. He would beat jobbers and squashes, but lose to the mid-card and main event guys. I saw him job to The Undertaker. Kerry on any normal day as the modern-day warrior, if he didn't have his problems would have been the man to put The Undertaker into a casket at WrestleMania. All in all, I think Kerry really, really was the superstar. I think he I think he faded. Which is why before he committed suicide he did what he did. So I, I'm not going to say much more where Kerry goes. I think his career was tainted. Too soon to be a world champion. Had to do it because David wasn't there. Intercontinental Championship, should, he should have been, been able to show his rise before becoming the Intercontinental Champion. 
drug addictions, dad's favorite. All those things worked against Carrie. Carrie didn't suck. Carrie was tainted. And that's all I'll say there with that. I think Carrie was was one of the better wrestlers just more on his look. And I think he would have lasted longer than David if David lived. I, I'll just be honest. When we when we did our top ten of uh, world class wrestlers, we didn't we didn't say well, the Von Erichs and the Freebirds and Devastation just groups. We talked about each individual wrestler and tag teams. So there you go. In a nutshell. Kerry Von Erich tainted more now than ever before. I'm going to say this. If Kerry Von Erich were alive today, would he would he still be wrestling? My answer, of course, is, is no, he wouldn't. I think after things, if things could have been with him as Billy Jack, you know, working where I worked, All right, and uh, with that being said, I'm, I can't really think of much more here. You know, I mean, Kerry, he abused himself. He abused his title reigns. He abused his pushes. He abused everything. Those things work against him. Like I said, if he wasn't Dad's favorite and he had to work just as hard as David did, he, he would be the best of honor. I personally still think he is. But when we did our top ten again of individual wrestlers and tag teams, we had Kerry at number one, David at number two, and between myself, Ben, and Rick Ryder, we kind of agreed to that more so because of Kerry's longevity. But truth let it be known, I think... I think Kerry would mean a lot more. His Texas Tornado gimmick, he needed to be the modern-day warrior. More people will know him as a Texas Tornado. Understand well and good, that's great. But as simply Kerry Von Erich, the modern-day warrior, was right for him. And truthfully, I don't think he, you know, I don't think he was satisfied with with any of his world title reigns. I don't think he was. I think he would have held the title longer than 18 days if you let his first 18 days be done in the promotions right around world class so he could always go to world class so they could get that over on him, have him you know have him go to places like mid south that showed him off. Have him go to Georgia before they uh, were to go out of business and draw a crowd. Have him carry Von Erich here in Florida, which is where he had, which he did come to, and had a successful uh, title run here against people. So just a lot of things. Carry could have been in the top five of greatest wrestlers of all time. Unfortunately, things work against him, so therefore he was tainted. So I'm going to say it right here. You know, I didn't, I didn't do anything in any order here, but I just wanted to say, Kerry Von Erich was tainted more through my eyes, and this is through the eyes of Robert James. And I just got to say, to to uh, to Kevin Von Erich and his kids, and Lacey Von Erich and her kids. And whoever else have them, you missed a good one. If you are diehard wrestling fans, you missed a good one in Kerry Von Erich. If he could be talked about more, I think more people would have enjoyed it with him. And with that being said, I want to thank everyone for listening. This has been Through the Eyes of Wacko Bob. <laughs>